all that goes to the Philippines. That's fairly disappointing to find out. Terrible. They're terrible. That doesn't look really healthy for the lands, to be honest. That's a few Canadians reacting to pics of our garbage rotting in the Philippines. They're not the only ones wondering how our trash ended up halfway around the world. Well, here's a hint. We've learned recycling is broken. So a lot of that stuff that you put in your blue bin ends up in landfills. So we send it overseas, and that's creating a global garbage war. And who brought this to our attention? Yep, the autocratic despot leaving the Philippines stuck our noses in it this week, threatening Canada if we don't take it back. Loaded the containers to a ship and advise Canada, I will advise Canada that your garbage is uh, on, uh, on, on the way. Prepare a grand reception. <laughs> Eat it if you want to. <laughs> nice. President Duterte says the containers are from Vancouver, that they were labeled as plastics for recycling, but are really all kinds of waste, even adult diapers, dirty ones, and has been there for almost six years. But, you know, here's the thing, this, this is not a one-off. We've learned that Canada has a habit of dumping our plastic on other often poor countries, and what we're doing could be illegal. Researchers have studied this. They actually placed GPS trackers inside electronic waste collected from recycling facilities across the country. And the experiment revealed that 12% of it was exported and some went straight to illegal junkyards overseas. There's actually an international meeting right now in Geneva where 53 countries are pushing Canada to stop swamping poor countries with our trash. So... What happened to our recycling dream? It all started so well back in the 70s. Recycling is definitely on the move here. The bright blue recycling boxes are being given away like hotcakes. We, we were amazing. That slogan, reduce, reuse, recycle, it was coined by Canadian activists. And the blue bin, well, we invented that too. So yeah, we're recycling pioneers, but it turns out we're really bad at it. We're almost the worst in the world. Only 9% of, Can of Canadian plastic, all that stuff that you stick in your blue bin, actually gets recycled, 9%. And until last year, most of that went to China. But now they won't take it, and that is triggering a garbage war. So who's being buried under our trash now? Plastic China made a big impact when it came out in 2016. The documentary exposed the devastating effect all of our exported plastic was having in China. Some say it's what prompted President Xi to stop taking our recycling entirely two years later. All that plastic is now being redirected to other countries, mostly in Southeast Asia. At least 24,000 tons of Canadian trash is now being ferried across the world to lower income countries with fewer regulations, places like Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam. It often ends up in secluded areas where the trash is burnt in illegal factories and junkyards like this. So how does it get there? Well, it's mostly the work of third parties. Cities like Toronto or Calgary or Halifax collect our recycling and then sell it to waste management companies across the country. Some of it gets recycled here, but Environment Canada says there are over 100 companies that also export Canadian plastic overseas. And there's essentially no regulation once it leaves. Once the garbage gets overseas, smugglers often buy the recycling, take whatever they can make money from, and throw away or burn the rest. Like what used to happen in China, some of the trash is sold to factories to burn for heat and power. Whole families, including children, make a meager living off this trade and have very little protection against all the toxins they're exposed to. And now it's Malaysia, the top destination for rich countries to dump their recycling. Recognize this plastic bag, a familiar Canadian brand in the middle of one of these giant dumps. Greenpeace Malaysia says locals are complaining of coughs, rashes, blood clots, and hospital visits because of the fumes. And the surrounding waters and land are devastated, all because of our trash. Out of sight, out of mind. Malaysia and other countries are now pushing back too, which explains why more and more recycling is being diverted to Canadian landfills. We've learned 
that some cities are just stockpiling plastic in hopes that eventually they'll find a way to recycle it. It's so bad, cities like Montreal and Vancouver are banning the sale of some plastics altogether, like styrofoam cups and water bottles. But the plastic, it just keeps coming. The federal, Ontario and Alberta governments have doled out hundreds of millions of dollars in subsidies to plastic producers to create jobs and, of course, to create more plastic. But there's nowhere to put it. So where is this heading? Joining me from Vancouver is Sarah King. She's head of the Oceans and Plastics Campaign at Greenpeace Canada. So, Sarah, I was really surprised to learn that per capita we recycle less and we produce more waste than the United States. And yet we think we're these great recyclers. Are, are, are we just hypocrites? I don't know. I don't know if we're hypocritical, but we definitely, I think, you know, we, we like to think that we do our part. And again, like for the most part, a lot of us do our part. It's the fact that the system is broken and, um, you know, we've reached a point where recycling can't solve this plastic waste and plastic pollution crisis. We really need to stop this problem at the source, which is stopping the production of, you know, highly problematic um, and unnecessary single use plastic items. Do you think what we're realizing from the Philippines now, from Duterte saying, I'm going to ship this garbage back to you. Do you think Canadians are surprised to realize where our garbage is going? I think Canadians are very surprised um, to, to realize that not only is recycling not working, um, but that also we would offload this problem on the global south that is already, you know, experiencing um, challenges dealing with their own plastic waste and also you know are bearing the brunt of a lot of the the impacts in communities um, in the oceans it's um, you know I, I've talked to friends uh, that have just been totally shocked by um, the fact that we would do that it, it really doesn't seem like something that um, you know the majority of Canadians would agree with so you know that's why we're really encouraging the government to to look to the source of this problem and, and stop trying to offload our problem onto, onto other countries. Allegedly, that garbage in the Philippines was dumped there illegally. Is there more of that, do you think? Will we learn of more? I think that because there's such a breakdown and there's so much trade of, of plastic in all its forms at this point, uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we keep hearing more and more of these cases as we, you know, as one border closes, to plastic imports and another, and countries turn to another one. Um, I think it's just going to keep going and going if we don't have strict regulations to ensure that um, receiving countries aren't, you know, bearing the brunt of of, uh, of our production problem. So there is this problem of what to do with all of that plastic after we're done with it. Where on earth are we going to put it? But at the same time, we're also encouraging companies and and their employees to make more plastic. I was surprised to see the like hundreds of millions of dollars in, in subsidies being given to produce more plastic. I mean, they're important jobs, great for the petrochemical industry. Is, is that wrong? Yeah, that was very uh, discouraging to hear, both before uh, the federal government initially announced the, the public consultation on a national plastic strategy, and then even after that, they've given subsidies um, for more plastic production, essentially. And so there's a real disconnect between, you know, what the federal government is saying they want to do, which is reduce plastic waste and uh, tackle the plastic pollution crisis, and then what they're actually doing, which is continuing to subsidize co companies that are producing plastic, and they're not subsidizing, um, you know, innovation in reuse and refill models um, and, and other ways of getting products to consumers that aren't so disposal-centric. The, there's this large gathering in Basel, Switzerland, uh, a big move to try and prevent more of these uh, exports of plastics. Canada has not been on side. What, what are you hoping for at, at this meeting? We are hoping that Canada will, will get on side and, um, and sign on to this amendment. Uh, that would basically make it more challenging for, for countries to export uh, plastic waste. Do you um, expect would, that? Um, we we are not hopeful at this point that Canada will sign on. They've they've refused um, to date, but we definitely uh, you know we hope that both the recent um, move by uh, the Philippines to to really you know call out um, this problem and also 
what we've been seeing increasingly, which is uh, the the plight of importing countries. We hope that Canada, uh, you know, that the federal government will take that to heart and, uh, you know, consider really what's going on at home.